Today we are going to be inspired by a character that is not a character but is a character in the Alice in Wonderland realm. A weed. Shout out to the second channel for my YouTube shorts. Make sure you subscribe to both this channel and my second channel. And I appreciate all the love so very, very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, um... I don't know how to paint a tiger. I mean, I do, but it's been years. Which is even funnier because face painters paint tigers all the time. But with my career, I don't really do face painting for children. I do more of like larger scale body art. So all of the face painters <laughs> that do tigers all the time are probably like, Lex, you are making this so much harder than it has to be. <laughs> like normal children's face painters, they're just like boom, boom, boom. They can knock out tigers so fast. And I'm sitting here like, all right, I think this is the face shape of a tiger. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> now granted, I have done a tiger, two tigers actually in the past, but it was so many years ago that I'm basically just trying to figure it out. I started off by adding all the white patches where I thought they were supposed to go, then added orange body paint, then added an even lighter orange to any highlights that I wanted underneath the fur of the tiger. I also widened my nose a little bit to give it more of a tigery face shape. Go ahead and apply primer as we are figuring this out together. I then applied white eyeshadow all over my lids. Of course, a cute tiger needs a pink nose, which I filled in with pink body paint. Apply eyeliner, a lot, a bit of Lexorcist. And I decided the best direction I could possibly go is to just start to draw on the stripes. I began to draw them on using black eyeshadow, creating some interesting shapes on my forehead, but nonetheless, working my way towards what tiger stripes should possibly look like. At this point, I am feeling semi-confident in my design, knowing, though, that it will look better when I add fur. Thus beginning the stages of adding fur. Using the Made You Look Detail brush, I went in and added orange body paint around my entire face and every now and then added a lighter orange. Now while I have you here and you're watching me paint fur, I love the Tiger Lily in Alice in Wonderland. It is so cute. So when I was trying to think about Alice in Wonderland characters that I haven't quite done yet, not really wanting to go into the land of the bird with the big round glasses quite yet, I thought about all the flowers and I'm like, oh my god, I love the tiger lily. I almost did a rose. That does not mean that I won't do it in the future. And by the way, already this tiger is starting to look so much better with fur.
orange eyeshadow, I then added a smidgen of shading above my nose, as well as on the side of my nose and by my eyes. Going in using the Made You Look body paint in the color Yeti, I also took a fan brush that I chopped into a bunch of pieces to make the brush more varying on the end, and added in the white fur texture. I then began filling in the black stripes using a black eyeliner. I was like, eh, didn't like that. So I went in using the Made You Look body paints in the color ink and a detail brush to draw them in individually. Using this as opposed to eyeliner, I feel like I was able to get a more feathery type pattern for the stripes. I did also go in with the fan brush and the color ink just for the larger sections of the stripes. I also decided I made my tiger nose a little too pink, so I just toned that down. I added in some black detailing around my nose, and it was just like, you know, once I started doing the stripes in the fur, I just couldn't stop doing the stripes in the fur. I added in more black detail onto the black stripes, which led to making even more stripes. And basically, once I had a pattern laid down of how I wanted my tiger, I just kept on going. the inner corners of your eyes to make a more tigery type shape. Add on your whisker holes. And looking at a reference of an actual tiger, they have a little bit of stripes kind of going towards their whiskers, so I added that in using black eyeshadow. I was also kind of looking at the white and just thought it looked a little too plain considering everything else had color variation throughout my face, so I added a smidgen of gray body paint throughout the white. I then added white whiskers and painted my neck green since I was going to have a green suit on. Now one thing that I didn't get a chance to really film was the headpiece, so let's just talk about it quickly. As much as I would have loved to film the headpiece for this, I cut it out of cosplay foam and then I spray painted it. So it was hard for me to actually film spray painting because I didn't want to get spray paint on my camera. Yeah, I could have zoomed in from afar, but it would have looked ugly. But I cut out all the pieces and glued them to a headband. I still have the pieces that are small that go around my face because I just needed to cut them to my face and then glue them on with some Prosade and then... 
If anybody ever asks you what I do for a living, I want you to reference this exact moment in this video. And I'll be the first one to admit I could not stop staring at this look once I had it on. I couldn't stop looking at myself in the mirror. I was like, oh my god, I'm adorable. And I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's just so freaking cute. Because the flower was so large on my head, my backdrop actually did not span the entire length of the flower. So I just wanted to show you guys like what it looks like without the grain sides put in in editing. And that's my room and my backdrop. Look how small it is compared to my headpiece.